good afternoon. Just want to link, thank Sages for the opportunity to be here and uh, um, present. Okay, so I have no disclosures. I'm coming from Bay State, I'm a fellow. So there's approximately 20 million inguinal hernia repairs performed widely each year. Um, there's actually no difference really in uh, total extraperitoneal offering the same advantages as open inguinal hernia repair. Um, with uh, laparoscopic TEP repairs, you can do obviously bilateral uh, hernia fixation at the same time as well as fixed recurrent hernias that were performed by open. Um, we also know that uh, when we go into repair um, a laparoscopic hernia that there's a um, 10 to 25 percent uh, incidence of finding a bilateral hernia. So there's limited data supporting uh, laparoscopic hernia repair without general anesthesia, in other words, just using uh, local anesthesia. Um, anesthesia can be patient specific, as we all know uh, when we're discussing this with our patients. Um, however, I looked at a study that was kind of on an internet website when I was doing my research, and I found that there was a company that uh, reported that you actually cannot do a laparoscopic TEP or TAP hernia repair using uh, local anesthesia. You have to do it under general. And I thought this was kind of funny because this is what patients are reading and what they, what, they're, uh, what they think when they come to your clinic. So looking back on the literature review, there's a laparoscopic TAP hernia repair. That's a transabdominal preperitoneal hernia repair. There's only one reported that they used local anesthesia, and that was in 1995. And they basically wanted to try this um, in hopes to uh, um, be able to operate on poor candidates uh, that were that could not undergo general anesthesia. So they used nitric oxide instead of CO2, and the nitric oxide they thought would be um, less uh, uh, hard on the heart or the, or the lungs. And they also knew that if they used CO2, that um, uh, they also did not use CO2 because they thought it would be different, less pain by using uh, nitro nitric oxide. They used 0.5 bupivacaine and epinephrine. In our study, we used uh, local anesthesia and uh, bupivacaine mixed. This patient was actually discharged on post-op day three after having an ileus. Um, the other two studies that were uh, reported in the literature um, using local only were two uh, laparoscopic TEP hernia repairs. Both were uh, the same authors, and I, looking at the studies, I think they were the same patients. So in 1999, uh, this study was done by, there's 10 cases performed a laparoscopic TEP. Um, they just wanted to describe this technique and their outcomes, and their outcomes were fairly, fairly good. They, their operative time was 47 minutes. Our operating time average was about 60 minutes. Um, they used about 20 cc's of uh, lidocaine in their study, which they reported, because I was kind of interested, and I wanted to know how do they how do they did it, and that was important to me as a surgeon, because I would like to replicate this if I could. They had no complications, and their patients were all discharged on the same day, likewise ours. Um, in 2000, they reported, they compared 107 cases of TEP hernia repairs, and 93 were done under general, and 14 were done under local. Now, they had the same operative time in their first study, 47 minutes, and they said that the, um, this was 29 minutes longer than doing an open inguinal hernia repair under local. They found no difference in recurrence or complication rates. Um, they also noted that the blunt dissection and the preperitoneal midline and the obturator areas did not trigger any pain. And this was kind of what we found in our studies, which was interesting, and I'll tell you when we do our methods and how we'll, our surgery and what we found. Um, the most painful site was the manipulation of the core structures, and when we're all doing an open inguinal hernia repair, we find that that happens quite a bit. So we have to inject a little bit more, slow down, give a little bit more fentanyl, propofol, move on. So the purpose of the study was to analyze the experience and outcomes associated with the use of local anesthesia for laparoscopic TEP hernia repairs from 2000 to 2015. Obviously, I did not perform these. Um, this was done under 38 patients total. Um, all these were done by a single surgeon who's in the room right now, Dr. Earl. All repairs were performed electively in an outpatient setting. Um, the patient selection, well, these were small reducible hernias uh, by the King, King North uh, classification, basically uh, upon surgeon uh, comfort. All relatively have low BMIs, I'd say like about less than 30 or so. Um, the, all patients, this is the most important aspect of the surgery, is all patients were willing uh, to go undergo this procedure without general anesthesia. So you had to thoroughly educate the patients and tell them, you're going to be awake, I'm going to be talking to you. And also, you had to inform them that the anesthesiologist is going to come up to your patient in the morning and tell them, we're not going to be able to perform the surgery because we've never done it. And so then they're going to start the, the surgery and start with general. So you really had to go educate the anesthesiologist and the patient themselves and tell them that the anesthesiologist was going to tell your patient that. The outcomes analyzed, well, we, an, we uh, analyzed the post-operative analgesic consum consumption, so Percocet, uh, Tylenol-3, the post-operative pain assessment scores we got with the nurses, and the complications or reoccurrence rates. So how do we perform this? So all sedation was controlled by MAC, with, by anesthesia. So this is the most important part of the study, is the local anesthesia was titrated at the incision sites in the peritoneal space. So basically, we made our uh, incisions, which was the eight millimeter uh, incision, or 10. We put a 10 uh, trocar in was our first incision. 
we'd use the SB tractor, we'd infiltrate a little bit within that space on, uh, and underneath the fascia, and then we'd put our round balloon dissector in there, and we'd slowly uh, infiltrate the, the balloon uh, dissector. And as we did this, um, we would control and talk to anesthesia and talk to our patient, and we would say, uh, basically, give a little bit more fentanyl, give a little bit propofol if needed, you know, and then we'd slowly uh, use our balloon dissector. Again, we would, um, once you put our other two ports in and you have the graspers going into the uh, preperitoneal uh, uh, region, you can use the um, air, the, um, the, gas no, uh, the gas hole to infiltrate some more local and it kind of goes down your grasper into the space. Um, you can also put it straight down your port where it goes within the entire space itself. Or you can put a needle in and direct it in, but again, a patient's going to feel that needle somewhere else because they're wide awake. Um, we, insufil uh, in insufil uh, we use the CO2 uh, insufflator at 10 uh, millimeters per mercury. Um, all that we um, used a mesh for every single patient, and we selectively used tacks. Um, no bladder catheters were util utilized in this uh, study. So out of this, uh, what are the results? So 23%, I mean, 23 cases uh, turned out to be bilateral at 60%. Um, eight were on the left, seven were on the right. Most of the cases were male, that was 86%. And the mean age was about 60 years. Uh, the mean BMI was 26.4. You can see that's relatively low for a population, especially in uh, upper Massachusetts. Um, all patients had small reducible hernias, and the, we use a permanent spiral tax in approximately 50% of the patients. So here's the kind of a key, too, is 90% of our patients had comorbidities. I mean, I went back in the chart and I logged uh, what, what they had, um, you know, cirrhosis, diabetes, hypertension, COPD, whatnot. The mean operative time was 102 minutes for the bilateral hernias and 60 minutes for the single repairs. Of the 29 patients that had assessment scores that I actually can go back and look at, 62% of them had zero pain upon discharge, and we're saying they, did, they didn't need any medications, although we all provided them a script of like Percocet or Tylenol-3. No patients required any hospital admittance or excessive use of pain medication in the perioperative period. Um, there was one complication, which is a small uh, scleral hematoma, which was managed conservatively. Follow-up was conducted on 74% of the patients, uh, we couldn't find the rest, um, with a mean total of 30.5 months. There was one recurrence, and uh, during the initial surgery, we did not perform tax fixation, whether or not this had anything to do with recurrence, I'm not sure. Um, we revised this using the, actually the TAP method under general and using tax fixation. There were no peritoneal, well, there, let me go back on this. There, were, there was a peritoneal, there was two peritoneal tears, and I, I apologize for this, because after talking with uh, the senior author, um, <clears throat> one was small, and the patient was asymptomatic and required nothing. The other one, uh, in the middle of surgery, wanted to be converted to general. So he was a little uncomfortable. He asked how much time we have left, and we said, probably be 10 minutes. And he said, okay, I'd just rather be under general. So we didn't do anything for that. We all know that sometimes you put varus needles in to evacuate any air. Um, we didn't have to do that in any of the studies. Um, there's no late complications or any mortalities. So overall, the most painful part of the um, procedure is actually during the cord structures. Um, when you're um, in performing this procedure, it's uh, you, uh, dissecting the hernia itself it has uh, quite a bit of pain. Um, so putting another needle and in, uh, uh, injecting a little bit more local over the hernia sac itself actually helps you manipulate the cord structures fairly well. Um, the results of this laparoscopic TEP hernia repair have been comparable to open in regards to patient selection, which we have found, postoperative pain, recurrence, and complication rates. So this is, offers an extremely safe procedure in outpatient setting. Um, this, this also includes people with uh, comorbidities that you would otherwise not uh, or be uncomfortable performing general under. Um, and, the, and just to notice, uh, note the success is achieved with uh, extreme um, meticulation anatomic knowledge. As we all know, doing any TEP or hernia repair requires at least 30 to 100 uh, uh, surgeries. And then doing this under local, uh, just make sure you're pretty comfortable doing under laparoscopic TEP before you uh, do this on your own. So this is, um, and also a huge part of this uh, study is um, having suitable interaction with the patients and the anesthesiologists. Any questions? Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Martin.